20 years ago on Halloween night 2003, trick-or-treaters across North America, Europe, and Asia noticed some spooky lights in the sky. The northern lights were dancing, and not in their usual polar habitats. They appeared all the way down to Florida and Texas and blanketed most of Europe. Some people wondered what the dancing columns of light were. It began as a diffuse glow that arced across the northern horizon. In other regions, they looked like tall pillars, tinged with hues of purple and pink. Then in Missouri, the aurora took on a rare blood-red shading, like it did in New York State, or in Oklahoma. Colorado saw them too. They ignited the skies over Maryland, dipped all the way down to Houston, sliced through the night in Illinois, and transformed the heavens in Indiana. Europe got them too. This crown of light in Scotland is called a corona. They painted Christmas colors over the Netherlands, lit up the beaches of Normandy. In Belgium, they shone through the cloud cover. Germany got a show as well. Some hint of color was even captured with the southern lights in Australia. So what happened to spark such an auroral outburst? Turns out, you can blame the sun. On October 21, 2003, forecasters at the Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado issued an outlook, warning of activity brewing on the sun. Two large sunspots had appeared and were growing in size. They were also rotating onto the side of the sun facing Earth. Sunspots are like bruises on the sun. They're cold, dark spots that throb and pulsate with energy and magnetism. Sometimes they launch solar flares into space, enormous flashes of light and super-energized particles. They can reach Earth in as little as 20 minutes. Those charged particles can cause radio blackouts on the sunlit side of the Earth. That can be a big problem for transatlantic and transpacific flights. Then there are more targeted coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. They're literal bursts of solar plasma and magnetism. CMEs are the most disruptive kind of space weather and can have widespread Earth impacts. That's why we have special models used to forecast them. Ordinarily, the Earth's magnetic field can dissipate a CME's harmful energy in the form of visible light, aka the aurora. The field is most concentrated at the poles. But if a CME is too strong, all chaos can break loose. Electrical grids can become overwhelmed. That can mean damaged equipment or even blackouts. The same can happen with satellites in space. Some can be knocked offline. And the aurora gets pushed closer to the equator. If you like this video and want to see more like it, click on the like button. It really helps us out a lot. And of course, if you are not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. It's totally free. And click on that notification bell. That way you always know whenever we drop a new video or whenever we go live. In 1859, an enormously powerful coronal mass ejection hit Earth. The so-called Carrington Storm spilled the aurora all the way down to Cuba and Hawaii. In Washington, D.C., it was possible to read a newspaper at midnight thanks to the aurora's glow. But telegraph wires caught on fire owing to the extreme electromagnetic impulses stemming from the currents induced by the geomagnetic storm. In 2003, we had far more sensitive electrical infrastructure at risk. It's no surprise that Wall Street quickly became worried after NOAA's late October bulletin. Flares began launching from sunspots, prompting investors to sell their stocks. Many were afraid the solar storm would damage company satellites. Then, during the early afternoon of October 28th, it happened. Sunspot number 486 produced an intense solar flare. Then another followed, and then another. And so did coronal mass ejections, aimed right towards Earth. Watch as high-energy particles bombard NASA's Solar and Heliophysics Observatory satellites. Astronauts on board the International Space Station were directed to seek shelter in an attempt to shield themselves from the radiation. A number of deep space research missions experienced sensor errors or irregularities. The Martian Radiation Environment Experiment on board the Mars Odyssey orbiter was destroyed. The Japanese also lost contact with their satellite, ADOS-2. It's never been recovered. Airlines scrambled to reroute their flights away from the North and South Poles. That's where radiation in the upper atmosphere was the greatest. A diverted flight can cost anywhere between $10,000 and $100,000 in extra fuel, though. Then came the CMEs. 
Instead of taking days to reach Earth, they hit in 19 hours. They slammed into Earth's magnetic field at 5 million miles per hour, speeds virtually unheard of. The impacts ignited incredibly vivid and widespread displays of the northern and southern lights. Satellites captured the northern lights swirling over Europe. The same thing was true over the US and Canada. The KP index is a metric used to measure how rattled Earth's magnetic field or magnetosphere is. It ranges from 0 to 9. Values of 9 are the most intense and only happen an average of 4 times per decade. The Halloween geomagnetic storms bumped the KP index to a 9 4 times in 2 days. Now it's impossible to say when we'll next have a geomagnetic storm as strong. We can't predict when a sunspot will erupt, but more sunspots would mean more chances of large flares and ejections. Sunspots are most common every 11 years during the peak of the solar cycle. That's when the sun's magnetic poles flip, making more sunspots. Our current solar cycle, cycle 25, peaks in 2025. For the My Radar app, I'm meteorologist Matthew Capucci. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.